Hi, welcome to Contempo. I am your host, Roberta Mark Bright. Thank you so much for being with us and for sharing with us. And please help me welcome our very, very special guests, Elisa Waldman. Hello. Hi. Hi. And Elliot Waldman. Hi, Roberta. You are very special, and I want to thank you for being here. You are collectors of Inuit art. Now, please, either one of you or both of you, tell us about the Inuit people. Give us a general history. Um, going back in time, uh, the, Inu the Inuit were known as Eskimos. That is a derogatory name at this point in time, and they prefer the name Inuit, which means the people. Uh, an individual Inuit is referred to as an Inuk, and uh, there are three areas where the Inuit live. One of them is in Greenland, the other is Alaska, and the other is in the upper Canada, northern regions near the Arctic Circle and beyond the Arctic Circle. And this is, these are the people that you are most familiar with because you have lived among them, yes, which is a very rare honor. Tell yes, us about is. that. Well, we had the opportunity to go there last July. Uh, um, my husband had met uh, Nunapar, one of the uh, uh, Inuit carvers, and uh, he invited us to come and stay with him and his family. So. Uh, he lives in Cape Dorset, which is on an island called Baffin Island, and there are three major cities in that area. One of them is Iqaluit, which is the capital of the whole uh, Nunavut area. Nunavut is the name of the territory that the Canadian government gave to the Inuit as their own land. And the name Nunavut means uh, our land. Um, we stayed in Cape Dorset. And then we went to Nuna Parr's fishing camp about an hour and a half or two hours away from Cape Dorset and spent roughly a week there with him and his family living off the land. What an experience that must have been. It was lovely. Uh, um, Cape Dorset has 1,200 people, population of 1,200 people. And if, if you think about it, the freshman class of New Trier High School I was thinking that, yeah. <laughs> is about 1,000, a little over 1,000 kids. Uh, two years ago, I think this year, it's about 1,100 kids. Uh, this is the population of Cape Dorset. Uh, so we had the opportunity to go there, and uh, people came to see who we were. Um, you have kids, you know, coming on the street, coming up to us, asking us if we wanted to buy a carving, because everyone carves there. Uh, adults, uh, uh, men, boys, just girls don't carve yet. Um, young adult women carve as well. Is this their only, if you will, industry? Really, this is what they do? Their arts are their only industry, whether it's uh, tapestry, prints, uh, carving, uh, baskets, um, that's it. There is no other means of making a living, basically, for the general population in the North. Um, and, of course, your living there is nothing like we live here. Uh, can you describe the Absolutely. living situation? Mm -hmm. They do live in homes pretty much the way we do uh, when they're in town. Um, they have satellite TV, so the whole family will sit around watching uh, everything that you and I might watch. And when they found out that we were from Chicago, <laughs> the immediate response was Oprah. <laughs> Not Michael Jordan Not anymore. Not Michael Jordan Oprah. anymore, uh, but Oprah. And they were just intrigued. Oh my God, you know, you come from Chicago. Um, and, and that was funny. And, and then we realized the first night we were there, as the whole family sat around watching The Price is Right or oh. uh, whatever was on TV, whether they understood what they're watching language-wise, the kids do. I don't think the older traditionalists really understand. Well, they speak French and English, is that right? Some do. Some, oh, some do. Some speak French, some speak English. It depends what area of the north they live, because some areas are north of Quebec, and uh, some of the Inuit do live in the northern part of Quebec so they would speak French. But if they live in other areas uh, west of Quebec, they'd be more likely to speak English if they speak one of the languages that we speak. Otherwise, they speak their language. Their language is in Yuktitut. And it's not written down. It's not written down. There is a Cyrillic version uh, that, that the church actually, in the beginning part of the century, helped them create and write down. And there are dictionaries now uh, which translate it to some degree, but um, they do not have a written language the way uh, we do. Well, um, don't we have to uh, 
know that these are a nomadic people cool. and um, everything that they hand down historically is of uh, their, their lore and their history is all oral. We're getting the signal now. I came into your gallery in Skokie and uh, did a